Welcome to eight steps to rolling out a social selling program. In this course, we are going to talk about the steps that it takes for a sales leader to roll out a LinkedIn for sales program for their team. I'm Bryn Tillman, and I'm going to be walking you through these eight steps today. And I'm really excited to get started. Keep in mind, if you have any questions at any time, feel free to reach out to me directly either by email at Bryn at socialsaleslink.com or schedule a 15 minute call with me at 15withbryn.com. And of course, connect with me on LinkedIn. So let's start with why social selling. Well, first, the buyer's journey has changed. I'm sure you've seen this all over the place, but 67% of the buyer's journey is completed before a sales rep even knows that their buyer is in the marketplace. That means they're Googling and they're researching and they're looking online and they're using LinkedIn to do their own research rather than calling that sales rep. When I started in sales, it was in 1990 in an inbound call center for Dun & Bradstreet, the only way they could get information was to call me and then I had the opportunity to do a little discovery call to find out what they were looking for so that I could send them the right information that they were requesting. Well today all of that is available online so that all those early stages and those early steps are done by the buyer themselves. So we want to make sure when they're searching for content we're the ones they're finding. Next, we are all digitally connected. Can you believe on average we look at our mobile device 85 times a day? I'm sure I'm doing it and so are our buyers. So we want to make sure we are where they are. And last, it's just the evolution of sales. This is the direction that sales is going in. They have to be online and they have to be digitally connected to their buyers. And so we want to make sure that we are enabling our teams to use LinkedIn and social selling in an optimal way that ultimately grows new business, helps to nurture current business, and continue to build relationships with both prospects and influencers. And actually, it's all the stakeholders involved, right? So when I started Dun & Bradstreet, it was, we, I didn't have an email, we didn't have a website, right? It was all about phone only. That's really, and fax machines. That was the beginning of fax machines, which we don't even have anymore. It's evolved beyond that. So social selling is really where we need to be today. Why it's paramount? 69% of B2B buyers use LinkedIn to research purchasing decisions. That is a huge number. Number two, on average, there are 6.8 decision makers in every enterprise sale. That's gone up significantly from, you know, just a few years ago, it was 5.7. And, and it goes, the further you go back, the less people were involved. But we're in a collaborative decision-making environment in business today. And many more people are involved. It's not just the person that holds the wallet and the shopper, right? There are end users that get involved, IT is involved, and finance is involved, right? Depending on obviously what your solution is, there are a lot of decision makers inside of your buyer. LinkedIn allows us to map out those buyers and help us to figure out our social proximity to those buyers. Ultimately, who do we know that can help us gain access to them? And 74% of buyers choose the sales rep that was first to add value and insight. This is a stat that is astounding to me. Buyers are choosing the sales rep that was first to add value, not on price, not on rate. It's value. And what better way to provide value than on social? So this is what most of us do right now. Almost all of us are using LinkedIn and Google in our daily business in one way or another, but it's often random acts of social. It's not part of a daily routine. 
we hop on, sometimes we accept connections, maybe we invite a few new people, and maybe we even engage in some content. But there's no real process around that. And for LinkedIn and specifically for social selling to be effective, you've got to have a process in place, a scalable, repeatable process that your team can use and align with their current sales practices to optimize the, the sales process, to optimize their relationships, to be able to do pre-call planning on a consistent basis so they know exactly what to do and what works and cut out what doesn't work and really hone the craft. Our goal with social selling is to get more conversations with targeted buyers, stakeholders, influencers, decision makers, more conversations. Just likes and comments and new connections does not convert to business. Our goal in everything we do with social selling is leading to more meaningful sales conversations. Now I have a phone here. Most of my conversations are via Zoom. However you do it, you need to take it off of LinkedIn and create real life conversations. So I'm going to go through these eight stages pretty quickly and then we'll go deeper into each of them. The first one is establishing goals and KPIs, key performance indicators. Next is buyer mapping, really honing down to pinpoint your exact persona on LinkedIn. Then we're gonna select tool stack. We'll talk about the different kinds of tools that are available. Most of them are free or freemium or very low cost that can help your team succeed with LinkedIn and social selling. We've gotta have a content strategy. Often content is one of the hardest things for your sales reps. So we have to make it pretty simple by putting a strategy in place. Often we bring marketing into this or this can get outsourced. Next, you need to have a customized playbook that details out templates and daily activities so that they don't have to overthink things. It's really kind of spoon fed to them. Then a value centric profile. This is really important and we're going to spend time on what that looks like. How do you position your sales reps to be seen as those subject matter experts and thought leaders that provide the insights and value to attract your buyers? Then the next step is rolling that out through training and then measuring and coaching for improvement. So let's start with establishing those goals and KPIs. The way to start thinking about this is defining what success looks like for you and for your team. What are we looking to gain from the social selling activities? And depending on what your sales process is like, if you're a high velocity sales team making a ton of calls, Maybe it's more scheduled calls that you get. Maybe some of your goals are around rapport building and identifying uh, things that they have in common with the people they're reaching out to. Or pre-call planning. What can they do in advance of this call to be more successful? Maybe some of their KPIs are around how many new of the right connections are they making on LinkedIn and how many of those are converting to phone calls. Next, we really want to spell out our result goals and our activity goals, and there are dozens of them. But we'll use a result goal of, let's say, how many new connections does a sales rep make that meet your buyer's persona on LinkedIn? That would be a results goal. Then you want to spell out what is the activity goals that they're taking to get those new connections, right? So is it, are they reaching out cold? Are they getting warm introductions? Are they engaging on content first, starting conversations online and then connecting with them? So it's building out the activities they need to do to hit the results goal. 
other KPIs could be how many of those net new com connections convert to phone calls or offline conversations. Really come out with what are the things that we want to look at that show that our reps are moving toward more sales conversations. And last, we want to make sure that everything we do aligns with our organization's goals, our department goals, our rep goals. We don't want to throw unproductive social selling activities at them if it is not working toward the alignment of the overall goal of the organization. So make sure that we don't just throw out new activities that are like busy work that everything we're doing is very productive. Now let's talk about buyer mapping. Buyer mapping is really important. It's how we identify all of our stakeholders. This is absolutely foundational if you are going to run any kind of social selling activity. If we can't find our buyers on LinkedIn, the right buyers, then we could be spinning our wheels connecting with all the wrong people. Once we do that, we want to make sure that we record their titles and keywords and other filters that identify them inside of LinkedIn. Now, there are lots of different ways to do this. One of them is go out to some of your ideal clients and kind of map out their persona on LinkedIn and create uh, you know, a search string and a, you know, a search that can be replicatable and duplicatable across your team that matches that persona. So we start by developing a Boolean search string, which is taking all those titles and using or as a modifier. So it could be VP of sales or chief revenue officer or director of sales. And then that will help to buy, to, to, to bring a list of those targeted buyers. There's also other filters we want to look at, whether we're determining, and we'll get to this in a tool stack, but if we're using the free LinkedIn or we're using Sales Navigator, can really depend on how deep we can go into our filters. If you're using Sales Navigator for your sales team, uh, you'll have filters like how large a company they are, how big certain departments might be based on um, staff. It could be, I mean, there's, there's just so many more filters that can be built out and can really hone in on your perfect buyer mapping. We also, while we're doing this exercise and we're buyer mapping, this is a great time to pinpoint the business challenge for each of those stakeholders. So the chief revenue officer has a different challenge than the director of sales. And so start to really understand your buyer and what they need to succeed and work with your marketing team to develop content and insights and value for each of those stakeholders. Next, it's about selecting our tool stack. This is vital to make sure that we are enabling our team to be as productive as possible. Here are some apps that we almost always recommend to every one of our clients. First, a calendar app. Calendly.com is the one that we use. There are many out there. Most of them are great. They sync to your calendar and people can schedule in 15 minute increments or 30 minutes, you set it up. It will read your calendar for availability and only offer those times to your buyer or to the person that's looking to book on your calendar. This is a phenomenal tool to help people go from connection to conversation really quickly. Next is the message template app. And there are quite a few out there, but the goal is that all of your messages, templates, connection requests, welcome messages, happy birthday messages, whatever templates you're going to be using over and over again. And by the way, we highly recommend that you tailor templates, but to have one available at your fingertips is a really great way to create productivity in the salesperson's environment. You can go to autotextlink.com to check one out. 
Another is advocacy or amplification tools. This can be anything from Buffer to Hootsuite to amplification tools like Everyone Social or Octopost. These are organizations or, or companies that allow you to curate and share content across the board. And I recommend Grammarly, that way your THENs and your THANs are always correct and you're using your commas where you're supposed to be. When you're on LinkedIn and you're typing quickly, uh, you can make mistakes so easily. But if you have Grammarly installed and it's free, you can get those caught before you publish. Obviously, uh, you need that CRM or platform of record and you want to make sure that whatever social selling program you have aligns with your platform of record. That also includes source of business and any other ways to track your activity. And then it comes down to LinkedIn free versus premium or sales navigator. Hands down sales navigator in my mind is the most powerful sales tool available today. The challenge often is the basic training that comes with Sales Navigator doesn't dive down into the strategies and tactics that everyday salespeople really need to leverage this tool to gain access to stakeholders. I will tell you though, with the right program in place, it is a powerful tool that every B2B sales professional should have. This is an investment anywhere from $79 to $129 a month. I think it might be the best investment a sales team can make. Next is the content strategy. Everyone needs one. Here's the key, and this is something that needs to get ingrained into the minds of every single client facing person in your company. You need to lead to your solution, not with your solution. When you lead with your solution, it's a pitch. Here's how we help. This is what we can do for you. Here's what our clients say about us. Now, all of that is important and we want to represent that on social, but in our conversations that we are having, in our content that we are sharing that is meant to be thought leadership that proves our subject matter expertise, it is foundational that we are dropping breadcrumbs of value and insights leading them to us. Next, identify content that follows your buyer's journey. What are the challenges they're facing before they're looking for your solution? That's great content to start to engage them at the right time. What are the, the things that they're looking for when they're shopping? What are things they're looking for when uh, they have some objections, right, about the product or service? Make sure your content follows their journey. Next, develop a content strategy and curation sources. So there's original content and curated content, we've got to make sure that we offer a library to our reps that they can pull from. And develop an advocacy process for reps. When we talked about tools, we talked about advocacy tools. If you have a really good process for reps to find that content or capture that content or grab it from a library and share it, you're in good shape. It's really difficult for a sales rep to find time or energy to go searching for content to share. We need to make sure as a leadership team that we're providing that for them. Next, customized playbook is one of the most important things to develop. What are we doing on a daily and weekly basis? You know, what are the, the KPIs that we're looking at and what, remember we talked about the results goals and the activity goals, what are the activities? We want to make sure that we've provided proven message templates so that our reps don't have to rethink a message every time that they're reaching out. 
again, we take these templates and we try to tailor them for every single person. We don't want to just send out like kind of these, um, you know, blanket messages because there's no way to really build the right rapport or relationships that way. But to start with good messages is a fabulous way to help our reps be productive. We want to make sure that we're aligning LinkedIn messages and phone scripts. So if we are inviting them to connect on LinkedIn and that we want to share some insights, we have to make sure that we're not baiting and switching and getting them on the phone and doing a demo. We need to start with the insights that we promised. It is so important that these get aligned. Next, through this playbook, we develop a scalable, repeatable cadence, absolutely foundational for making sure that we can roll this out with every onboard, every new rep. Step six is a value-centric profile. This is foundational. You can do all the work in the world to connect with and start building a rapport with your buyers, but if you don't have a value-centric profile and they just see you as a sales rep, they are much less likely to want to have a conversation. So we want to make sure that we're moving our profiles from a resume to a resource where we're really providing value. We can go back to that corporate vision stat. 74% of buyers choose the sales rep that was first to provide value and insights. Why don't we just start on our profile? Often this is our first impression. Create curiosity. Get them thinking a little bit different about their current situation or a problem that they're facing. It'll help us grow credibility. In fact, there are other ways we can grow credibility on our LinkedIn profile with adding case studies, testimonials, recommendations, uh, even uh, endorsements to specific skills can offer bits of credibility. So make sure you've got that down. Also, it is vital that you're relating to your buyer's challenge, right? So what are they facing today? Right at that precipice before they knew they needed you or right when there's this challenge that this is going on and it's now a conversation internally. What's happening? If you can talk about that, then they go, oh, he gets me, she gets me, right? And when you do that, they're going to perk up and pay more attention. Make sure you're offering vendor agnostic insights. These are not insights on how to buy from you. We're not telling them how we can help them. We're actually helping them. And that's going to move them closer and closer to us. And make sure you've got a call to action. If you are curious or exploring or um, challenged with, let's chat. I'm happy to provide insights specific to your company, position, environment, whatever that might look like. Here's a link to my calendar. Looking forward to setting up a call and then adding your email and phone number so you are easy to get in touch with. Now, once we've got the playbook together and all that buyer mapping and we're prepared with value-centric profile templates to roll out. Now it's time for the training. The customization is key, especially for adoption in a larger sales organization. The more you can customize this to their daily routine, that playbook, their profiles, the content strategy, the better success your team is going to have. Consider there are a couple of ways to do training. There's instructor-led classroom, that traditional workshop style training. There's also on-demand and live webinars. These are great, especially if you can get them customized. However, if you can do an on-demand or the live webinars, sometimes getting fed these bite-sized pieces can have even more success than those workshop days. And then there's just-in-time or guided learning. This is when they've learned everything, they've gone through the program, and now we're dripping like new strategies and reinforcing other strategies on a daily or weekly basis in an email or um, through uh, an e-learning platform where they are 
getting all of that great stuff reinforced on a consistent basis. That really has a huge piece in the success of this program. And last, it's measure and coach for improvement. And the coaching is for reps and leadership. The leadership should learn really, how are we measuring the success of this? How am I bringing up the pros and the cons of things they could start doing and stop doing and continue doing on our weekly one-on-one -on -one calls? And those reps need that reinforcement over and over. Here's the key, when you are coaching for success with LinkedIn and social selling, lead with data, right? We could go into a rabbit hole of arbitrary things that we can talk about, but if we've got our KPI set, we wanna make sure that all of our coaching is led with that data. And focus on real deals. Make sure that they're coming to you with their top five accounts that they're trying to get in front of, that they're bringing that to their coach and that the coaching is about actually working on deals, not some like concept coaching, but real deals that really can provide some insights to gaining access to those stakeholders, building rapport with those stakeholders, and our goal, getting more sales conversations with those stakeholders. And I mentioned that start, stop, and continue. I jumped ahead, but this is so important. On every coaching call, when you are working with a rep on their LinkedIn and social selling activities, talk about what are some things that we haven't implemented yet that might be successful? What are some things that we've been doing that haven't been successful that maybe we should pull off of the daily checklist? And what should we continue doing? That's been great. So these are our eight stages, right? Let's do it again. So establish goals and KPIs. What are we gonna measure? Buyer mapping, who are we going to, to go after? Selecting the tool stack. What are the productivity tools that we're gonna offer to help enable our team to be successful? putting a content strategy in place for both original and curated content, customizing a playbook so that they can see what they need to do on a daily basis, it makes it really simple for them. Develop that value-centric profile so that when their buyers show up, they are seen as the thought leader and subject matter expert which gets them more likely toward their goal of wanting a conversation with us. And social selling training, make sure you've got that program in place and you've got measuring and coaching for improvement. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. A little gift for you guys. It's a private session, speaker special, buy one, get one. So we get two 90 minute sessions for $500. Normally they are um, $500 each. Just go to linkedinsessions.com and schedule yours today. And you can find my book on Amazon at linkedinbook.info. It was a pleasure teaching you guys the eight stages to rolling out a successful social selling program using LinkedIn. Reach out to me with any questions that you might have. I would love to chat. You can find me on LinkedIn. Currently, I am the only Bryn Tillman on LinkedIn. Uh, and you can reach out and schedule time at 15 with Bryn, B R Y N N E dot com. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey. And I can't wait to answer your questions.